Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Rainbow Goddess YouTube channel. I am Rosalie, and I am really honored to be here to be making this video for all of you today. And I hope you all are doing well wherever you are in the world. And I'm grateful that you have found this video. And I hope that everything that unfolds today is supportive and brings forward the messages and the healing and the awareness and all that your heart has called forward for you. As I really truly felt guided to make this video today to really speak to the innocence of our childlike heart. And this is something that I have really been feeling into within myself as really recognizing truly how beautiful our heart consciousness is and what a sacred blessing it is to be able to feel the beauty of love that each one of us can experience and express. And what I have recognized within my own heart is that there is a childlike innocence to our feelings and to our experience. And what I mean by that is there's a level of vulnerability that we feel when we are in this open, expanded heart field of childlike innocence that we feel almost afraid to really allow our hearts to feel and be open. And so often we keep that part of ourselves protected and hidden from the world, almost as a defense mechanism to protect ourselves from that which in the past has wounded us or harmed us, which for many of us started when we were children, where we created this belief that it wasn't truly safe for our hearts to be open and free. And we felt we needed to protect it from being hurt by others or protect it from a cruel, harsh world, which really was a defense mechanism of a protector part of ourselves, you know, like a child wanting to defend against something that feels unjust. And so when I was feeling into this part of myself that felt a little fearful of being hurt by others. When I met her, she was probably only seven years old. She was very young and burdened, <laughs> feeling the need to protect and shield my heart from others, not from like from this space of fearlessness but actually from this the space of fear that if i don't defend you if i don't protect you if i don't fight against others then you will be hurt and i wanted to let this part of me know that i understand why she felt that way why she felt that she needed to be strong and brave and courageous and tough and to fight against everything and everyone, you know, whether it be a comment or an, uh, an insult or something that came towards me that felt like an, an attack, like a, a personal attack upon me and my innocent heart. And what a beautiful thing, you know, to really see this younger version of me that just wanted to feel safe and just wanted to protect me. And I feel as adults, many of us have these wounds of feeling fearful of being hurt by others. 
And what I realized is that in allowing this fear to dictate how we experience our reality, we're actually closing ourselves off from greater love. We're actually believing that that our fears are more powerful than love itself. And this is something that I realized that I could help parent my inner child with, that I could call this part of me forward and I could say to her, thank you for being such a brave defender of my heart. Thank you for looking out for me and for being this beautiful protector when I needed that, when I felt that that was my only option, when I didn't know any different. And once I was able to express to her, you know, I looked at my inner child in the eyes and I said, you know what's even more special and more powerful is that love always wins. And I looked at her and he said, do you believe me? And I slowed my breathing. And I said to her, love is the most powerful medicine and protection that we have. And that really, truly, by fearing being hurt and closing off the most beautiful part of you, you are actually dimming your light and your greatest superpower. And I asked her to put down the sword. And I put down my sword <laughs> because what I hadn't realized is that within my own personality and my own ego, that I, as the adult awakened spiritual version of me, had also been fighting these parts of myself that were only acting out of survival or pain or hurt or whatever aspect of me in my personality had developed from being a part of this world and this conditioning. And I was fighting with myself instead of fully receiving myself and understanding why these parts of me were there in the first place. And so I actually invited all parts of me that were wanting to come forward of my ego and my personality construct that I had been fighting against for quite a while. And I sat with them at the table in this internal like meditation that I went into. I saw them sitting before me and they all looked weary, <laughs> like battle weary. Like they all looked ready to defend themselves against what I had to say. <laughs> and so I spoke to them and I said, I only want to love you. And I looked at all of these parts of myself, this like angry part of myself, this fearful part of myself, this self-righteous part of myself. I said, I only want to love you. And then this amazing part of my personality stood up and said very boldly, you only want to love us because you want to get rid of us. <laughs> and I just started laughing out loud on the yoga mat during my meditation because I thought I can't outsmart my ego construct. I can't, I can't try to manipulate or, or outsmart my ego construct and I can't fight with it. I can't fight fire with fire. <laughs> so I laughed and I, and I said, I understand why you feel that way. Because in the past, that is what I have wanted. I've wanted to demolish and get rid of my ego. I've wanted to completely um, squash it so that I can experience an elevated level of consciousness that is rooted in love. But I said to my ego and me, these aspects of self, my personality, 
traits that had been conditioned through this experience, I, I looked at them and I said, no, the loving thing to do is to understand why you feel the way that you feel. I want to know. I want to know why you're angry. I want to know why you feel like you need to fight or defend. I want to know everything that you need to express to me that you've been holding on to because that is the only way that I can love and receive you so that you actually feel loved and received. Not that I just want to say the words I love you so that I can get rid of you <laughs> because that's often what we have experienced on this journey of awakening. We we say, yeah, I love myself and I love all parts of myself. But then those parts of you don't, they hear the words, but they actually don't feel that loving kindness when you're not able to receive them or when they start to feel triggered and you judge them, right? It's, it's like if you, could have, if you could view the aspects of your personality as your children, then you can you can respond in a way that a loving parent would. And so one by one, I called forward each aspect of my personality to represent themselves. And I asked them what they wanted to share with me, what they wanted to tell me. And what I noticed is that most parts of my ego construct that felt triggered by others were actually feeling a deep state of injustice against the way that it had been treated, feeling as if it had been hurt for no reason. It had been hurt by others, even though it did nothing wrong. And so there was this deep pain, anger, frustration, and, and resentment and bitterness and also um, victimization around feeling like projected at or feeling hurt and just stabbed in the back, you know, by others and experiences. And it felt like it wasn't deserving of any of that, which of course, none of us are ever deserving of mistreatment or abuse or harm. But we can't wait for others to apologize to those parts of us that have been hurt. We can't, we can't wait for others to, to love and heal those parts of us because we'll be waiting a long time, if not our whole life, for that to happen because it may never and so what we actually can do is that we can begin to love those parts of us and say the words that we needed to hear to those parts of us. We can say, I understand that you feel hurt by another's words you felt was unfair, that you felt was projected upon you that you felt judged but I want you to know that it had nothing to do with you that it wasn't your fault and that you did nothing wrong and I want you to know that you are beautiful and speak to your innocence because those parts of you that you're fighting with those parts of your ego that you're in battle with like you're slaying a dragon on this mission to, you know, completely demolish all parts of your personality that you don't agree with. Those parts of you are actually your innocence. Instead of viewing the ego as your enemy, what if we viewed those aspects of your personality as your innocence that has been brutally wounded <laughs> in some form of battle? And maybe it's time to call those parts of you home. And what you'll notice is that a lot of those parts of you are very young. 
they are very small and inexperienced in this world because they are often children, childlike parts of you from when you were little that experienced that pain and that initial shock to your heart and your nervous system where you felt unsafe, where you felt attacked, where you felt wounded like a battlefield. And that's really what it was being shown to me. Like, like we went to war as kids in this world as sensitive empathic children and we thought what is this planet (laughs) why are people being so mean and I don't feel safe here I don't feel my heart is being protected and I don't feel others are being conscious of the words that they're using. And they're not speaking to me from love. And there is even adults in my life that are not speaking to me from love. So if adults aren't protecting me, who's going to protect me? And so often there is a part of your child that feels it is its job to protect you because no one else seems to be able to do that. And often we feel betrayed when our parents aren't the ones that are defending and protecting us, the ones that we have put all of our faith and trust in. And even them, they don't have the power to fully protect you. And from that space, the child can feel very afraid and very scared. And so as the adult, as the soul consciousness begins to fully awaken within you and you have reached this point on your journey, then you can be the greater love for yourself that can really give to these parts of you all that it needs so that you can be greater love in this world. And when you can heal your heart wounds and your battle wounds and your battle scars and you can love those inner children with all of your heart and all of your soul you will see that your whole reality changes and that actually you have so much compassion for other people because you can recognize their child wounds being triggered and their own ego personality constructs that have stepped forward and that are crying out from their innocence that they also feel hurt and betrayed and feel victimized and so they lash out and you can see those parts of others lashing out not at you personally but simply lashing out crying out for somebody to love them because that's all we truly want as human beings is to be loved and to be seen and received. And that is what children want. And if we can see that what you felt and wanted as a child it hasn't changed a lot as you've aged. Yes, externally, your interests change and internally your inter- interests change. But how you feel, your childlike heart is still the same, beloveds. Your innocence is still within you and you still want to be free in this world. You still want to be able to be received and loved and accepted by others. That's what it is so beautiful about being human is that we never lose that completely. And actually the returning back to our childlike innocence is returning back to the truth of who we are. And so really feel into that as I'm speaking about it. Feel into how beautiful those little inner children are and, and not seeing them as enemies. Put down your sword. Make it your vow to no longer fight, defend, or be violent towards yourself, no matter what it is. There is a reason you feel hurt. There is a reason you feel righteous. There's a reason you feel needy. There's a reason you feel all of those things. It's not 
because you were a bad human. It's not because you're a bad person. It's not because you have flaws. Those parts of you are speaking to you. They are your inner children. They are your innocence. And your innocence is so beautiful. And they just want you to love them. And can you love yourself more, not less, every single day? And what would that look like? What would that feel like? When you start to feel judgment towards yourself or another, can you see that as a part of you that is your innocence, not your enemy, asking for more love? When you feel angry, when you feel annoyed, when you feel frustrated, can you see that as your innocence asking for more love, not less? Because what we do is we cut those parts off from ourselves, deeming them as unworthy of love, when what they actually truly need is more love, not less. And if we only loved the parts of ourself that feel heal and whole, then we are missing out on some of the best parts of ourselves, because the best parts of ourselves are often the ones that have really taken a hit or taken on an experience or a conditioned response that was hurtful and was hard and was painful. But we can bring those parts of us back into a state of wholeness. Not by wanting to tell them they're not allowed to be sad anymore or angry anymore, but hear them out. Allow them to be sad. Allow them to be angry. Allow them to be frustrated. Ask questions. Ask why. Or simply just lovingly accept them and see what happens. See the beauty that unfolds when you can receive yourself and accept yourself and give yourself all of the things that you so deeply want from others. And how does that feel in your body when you accept yourself fully, completely, and totally, 100%, no matter what it is? And what happens if you say, I am no longer willing to hide from myself. And by not running from yourself, avoiding yourself, you begin to embrace love and accept yourself. And in doing so, you feel more love. You feel more like yourself you feel more connected to your heart consciousness your soul consciousness and fear begins to dissolve from the cellular from the cells in your body and you begin to feel more love and more beauty and more grace and you're able to give that and share that with others and they begin to heal too because you know that deep inside that's what you came here to do to be the greater love in this world, to take on the conditioning of the society of your family, and then to heal it through your loving heart and through your ability to accept everything as an opportunity to heal and grow. Taking a deep breath and feeling that Feeling your heart soften as you breathe slowly and you say that you are ready to truly love all of you. That there have been parts of you that have been waiting so long for you to see them, to love them and accept them. And for you to put down the sword and to stop fighting with them. It's, it's time to stop fighting our egos and to love our egos because our egos 
need more love, not less. And our egos are worthy of love. And our egos are worthy of being heard and seen. Because a lot of the time, the ego is just an overstimulated part of your personality, your nervous system that does not know how to heal because you keep rejecting it. You keep yelling at it. You keep telling it it's wrong. You keep telling it you hate it. You keep telling it it's ugly. (laughs) And so it keeps feeling rejected and hurt and more in pain. Love heals all. Your beautiful heart has so much capacity to love. And if you learn to truly embrace and love yourself, think about what a gift you are to this world, to your children, to your nieces and nephews, to this whole planet. Because you break the cycle of suffering. You break the cycle of pain and projection and fighting and violence and hate and war. You break that with you by loving yourself. We can't change the world, but we can change ourselves. We can't change other people, but we can change how we perceive any given moment, any situation. And when we get triggered because another person's ego is inflated or in pain, how do we love more, not less? How do we love them more and not less? How do we love any judgment that may come up or any thoughts that may come up that are of frustration or annoyance or anger or wanting to run away how do we how do we love whatever we're feeling whatever was brought up by that person how do we love those parts of us and how do we sink and soften deeper into our breath and into our hearts and into slowing our breathing and into regulating our own nervous system so that when they're feeling triggered that we don't have to match their energy but we actually begin to regulate into a higher frequency of love and then we can be the modeling for them to heal because they recognize subconsciously that we're not playing this game with them we're not fighting with them we're not feeding into the victimization that they're currently experiencing what would that feel like in your body to slow your breathing and to feel your heart softening and opening believing and knowing full well that you can give yourself more love not less and in doing so you can give another more love not less And that's how we heal the world. That's how we heal each other. And that's how we begin to shift this entire planet. I love you all so much. And I am sending a big soul hug to all of you. Thank you for listening and receiving the messages in this video. And I hope you all have the most amazing, beautiful day from my heart to yours. Namaste.